Welcome to the RU251 and welcome to a map that needs no introduction. Any longtime player of War Thunder, someone that's been around long enough to unlock some 6.7 vehicles, is very familiar with this terrain and you can probably already tell where I'm going. Straight for the capture point up on the hill. It's a nice spot to overlook the battlefield and for a quick tank like the RU, it's a fantastic opportunity to get a base cap and then see what can happen. And judging from the fact that I've taken the time to edit this video and put it up on the YouTube channel, you can probably guess that this ended up being an excellent opportunity to show off some of the RU251's capabilities as well as something that I've come to expect from German Air RB teams but I was delighted to enjoy in this tank RB battle. Talking about teamwork! Check it out. Now I talked like I was going to capture the base, but I decided at the last second, you know what, I've got a daily task to destroy enemy vehicles, and this is such a good chance to take a side shot at this T95, so I went for it. Tried the binocular shot, went a little bit overboard, so aiming lower, take the shot, Bam! Straight into the engine compartment and uh, casemate tank destroyer. As much as he has heavy armor, he's not going to have a good time. Put another one in him. Didn't really do all that much. Took out a crew member. No big deal. Next one goes down range. And, well, a track. <laughs> and then all hell breaks loose. Everybody sees that stranded T-95 and it's like a mammoth hunt. Just, it's, it's time to unload on the heavy. <laughs> So this poor guy, you know, a T-95 is slow enough as it is, but you sort of expect it to perform well, and uh, that didn't work out so well for him. Meanwhile, Hulk Pandemic in the Sonderkraftzeug, Sonderkraftfahrzeug, well, he did now, uh, got absolutely surrounded by enemy quick movers, took out that bulldoge, and I just take... A shot in the rear of the engine compartment from I don't know what, but I'm still moving. I'm not sticking around to find out. Pop smoke, stay mobile, take my chance, see movement, put one right into his engine, and yeah, you try and figure that one out. I'm not even gonna. I guess hole break isn't a thing anymore as our second uh, heat round just takes out a track and the commander. So he's still able to fire back, both of us having to shoot through bushes, so I'm squinting as hard as I can, finally get that third shot into him, which is kind of ridiculous. Take out that Russian Amphib. Next up, and you'll notice that I've been cutting between replay and live recording. That's because Shadowplay just couldn't quite catch up to me wailing on the record button once I realized this match was going to be pretty epic. Here we're going to the last part of the replay, catching up to the STRV. Target destroyed. So we're having a pretty good day. I usually expect to get a base cap and a kill with this tank. If that's successful, I'm having a good day. But already, performance is through the roof in the RU-251 and you can see why I've sort of become enamored with this tank. The mobility, the surprising amount of survivability, and that needle launcher of a heat round is really effective at pulling off some things that you weren't able to do with previous German tanks. I'm looking at you Tiger 2, I'm looking at you Panther, <laughs> you medium tank that's sluggish as all get out compared with the competition but you'll also notice that the cap points are not being held by my team and whenever I get to this point in the match I've just kind of gotten I don't know maybe cynical if I don't see my team performing well in the beginning of the match generally what happens when you're against the Russians is you just get steamrolled at the beginning so I'm seeing that side pretty weak and I'm not expecting a ton out of my team, so I just decided to continue to play aggressively, see what could happen, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be very pleased with the way that my teammates pull together 
show some real skill and coordination and turn this match into, well, I'll tell you it's a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. You can see what's going to happen. But I did label this video comeback, didn't I? In any event, I now find myself in a position that every RU251 driver I'm sure finds enviable. Uh, I have eyes on the enemy, I have soft cover between me and them, and I can easily peek this hill and take shots at whoever's not paying direct attention to me at the time. Spotting another T95? You know what I gotta do. First one zings over his head, and it's the same guy <laughs> I took out the first time, but he's angled more toward me. That one just got absorbed by the fantastic amount of armor he has, but BAM! Now was that an amazing bomb or what? Congratulations to T80UM2 for pulling off that fantastic bombing maneuver, scores himself a double kill and gets me an assist, brings us a lot closer to having control of this game and the allied team is starting to falter on the open ground. I'm um, taking a little bit of fire, a bomb comes in, and what did I tell you about the survivability of this tank? That is amazing. You know, I honestly should not have survived that. I think that the uh, high explosive nerf got a little bit out of hand back in the day when it was introduced quite a while ago. It took the fun out of a lot of vehicles for me, which is too bad, you know. You used to be able to play a howitzer as a deadly... Um, vehicle using high explosive. I'm thinking of the Sherman 105, which was my very favorite. Taking a shot here, and I got a little bit too aggressive. You think we should pull back? No, nah, I'm sure we have time to reel. Uh, okay, that was dumb. I shouldn't have done that. That was a bad tactical deci decision on my point. Now, with tickets draining rapidly from my team, again, I told you I was feeling cynical. So I'm taking out a bird that's always fun to fly. Here comes the narwhal, ME262A1U4. Fantastic vehicle. One of the fastest things in the sky at its tier. And uh, we're coming straight in for the battlefield. Still feeling aggressive. I want to get this match over with. I don't feel like my team is going to win. So now I just want to have some fun. Pull that saucy little roll to line up the cannon. I see my target down near the A point. Lining up, take a few shots. And I'm not sparing the ammo here. Now in Air RB, it only takes one hit to kill a ground target. So I tend to be a lot more sparing with my shots. But here, I found that it generally helps to spam um, as many top penetrations or side pens as you can with this cannon. The high explosive filler is effective but only in a small area so with the larger tanks that you'll find here like this ISU-152 <laughs> normally it'd be difficult to pen but uh, or to take out but that allied bomb fantastically uh, makes a huge difference again uh, my team's bombing here has been absolutely um, essential in halting the enemy advance toward those central control points in the town even though they are still occupied by the enemy at this point so here I am engaging a what is that a T-32, T-29, one of those American heavies get some shots into the engine deck set a fire, it's a good start, looks like I also got a couple of crewmates crew members in the deal so not bad at all again difficult to get kills with this vehicle um, against what's commonly used on the battlefields at a 6.7 but satisfying engaging fun in my book absolutely again here I'm not trying to win the match but now I'm starting to think a little more tactically as I see opportunities rise take another shot at the ISU and get one into its transmission that'll put him out of the action for a while that really helps my teammates to be able to focus on him as he's in open ground running out of cannon rounds because again I've been liberal with my application of 50 millimeter armor piercing meaningous 
or whatever you call the uh, armor piercing cap rounds. Here we're taking some shots at a T-34-100, which again, open ground, he's hit, he pops smoke, and that massive bomb blows him away. Again, fantastic close air support from my team. These German fighter pilots really know their stuff. At this point, I was getting excited because I see the match turning around and it's so close. That ticket counter is just bleeding out. Last pass with the narwhal and it's back to base. But now there's a huge grin on my face because I know this could be an epic match. So, watch that feed as you see the battle turning around. Our team is picking up kills. We're starting to gain ground. People, you know, generally it's difficult to find that balance between skilled pilots going out and performing close air support and tankers rolling out and actually capturing points so that we can win the match. And my teammates now are just putting the brakes on this allied army assault that we've been facing down for the entire match and this epic struggle is reaching its climax now as the tide begins to turn for the German forces. You know, earlier today I was playing in the French tree with the P63 C5 which has become one of my very favorite planes in this game just because of its ability to perform but I was so frustrated because allied teams in Air RB tend to have a complete lack of teamwork. You'll find two or three very skilled players, some of whom are in squads that have you know one or two people supporting each other, uh, and everybody else just kind of does whatever they want to do. And the meta of War Thunder, especially in the Air RB, does not support that. But what's really supported is the kind of teamwork, the kind of focused effort that you find in German, in Axis teams, in Air Realistic. Groups of fighters that stick together, much like Japanese teams, which again, it's a simple concept and it's not as much fun in my opinion as flying out whatever you want to fly. And that's why I think that allied teams sort of, they have, they have the fun figured out, but the the way that the game works for getting a win just doesn't support that. And maybe that says something. Maybe there's room for improvement with the way that victory is achieved in ARB. But I digress. Um, what I've seen, what I was getting frustrated with, I was just like, you know what, forget it. I'm gonna go grind for the mouse. So I take out the RU251, I go into 6.7 German RB, tank RB that has become fun for me lately because of the RU251, which really, does this need to be a premium? I feel like Germany needs more tanks like that that are available to everyone. Uh, rank 6, yeah, maybe that's where we're starting to see those things, but I'd like to see them a little bit sooner. And I'm flying out in the Narwhal. Second round, full of ammunition, full of determination as I'm watching the chat just go wild with people trying to coordinate this already well-functioning team, encouraging people to hang in there because this could be an epic comeback. Uh, and what's the directive? Okay, nobody die. <laughs> so what do I do? Oh, let's head on a Tempest. Why not? <laughs> um, was that a Tempest? I don't know. Um, but I'm very confident in the Narwhal's ability to evade fire in a head-on. When it rolls, it doesn't roll uh, straight along its axis, so it performs a good dodging maneuver, which is what you saw there. And, you know, I figured why not try and get an epic kill on him by putting some cannon rounds in his direction. And, uh, can you see I'm being aggressive here? I fly straight toward that ZSU, and he does what a ZSU should which is blow me out of the sky. I get a critical hit into him, which picks me up another assist, and I roll out now in the Tiger II, a tank that I'm not really confident in, 
because, well, you know, it's just not the king that it used to be, and I never really played it when it was. I was a noob back then, and I couldn't quite figure out how to make the Tiger II work for me. I tried long-range sniping, but I was no good at long-range sniping, and, you know, honestly, I, uh, I just don't like that kind of playstyle where you hunker down in a position and engage from long range. Now the Tiger 2H can be used effectively as a brawler, but I won't have to do that because the match is won. My team came through very nicely with the victory. And again, it's all thanks to the teamwork and the fantastic amount of skill that was on display from my team members. I really feel like I was just kind of supporting that war machine and the results turned out very nice. German efficiency for the win. Again, big thanks to my teammates who made this an epic match. I felt like I was just there for the ride, enjoying the performance of some fantastic German vehicles in what's probably the best lineup in the game. Well, that about does it for this video. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face like a boss and high fives all around. <laughs>